So uh, May Winfield is uh, a senior construction insurance lawyer of over 16 years experience. She is a recognized legal specialist in BIM and construction technology and is the author and co-author of a number of leading reports and documents in this area, as well as speaking at conferences worldwide on these topics. She was a speaker on the main stage at the Blockchain Summit London 2018 and is an associate editor of the Frontiers in Blockchain Smart Contracts Division publication. Her articles analyzing the legal and contractual impact of smart contracts are available online. Uh, so over to you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here to talk to you about smart contracts improving construction and in particular the legal issues and obstacles that this can cause. My name is May Winfield, I'm an Associate Director at Borough Happold and as you heard a senior construction lawyer and a specialist in BIM and construction technology. For those of you who haven't heard of Borough Happold, uh, you probably have heard of some of our projects including uh, the Museum of the Future and that big waterfall in Changi Airport. But just to mention two of the things we do, uh, which you may find interesting. And one of them is the analytics engine. So analytics is all about bringing technology and humans together. And working in real time, we can interact with the engine or sketch over it, or whilst getting live feedback on the effects of our changes. And there's the link there if you'd like to know more. The other one is to bomb both literally and figuratively. It's an open source computational project that aims to support greater collaboration in the construction industry. The core purpose is to tackle the very real problem of interoperability between software. And again, I've put up a link there so you can find out more. But looking at the topic we're talking about today, when you talk about smart contracts, one of the quotes you hear most is, is it smart or even a contract? Nick Zabo himself said that smart contracts are inspired by contracts. They're not the same thing necessarily. But how has it been defined? Well, experts from UCL and Barclays define a smart contract as an automobile and enforceable agreement, automobile by computer and enforceable either by legal enforcement or tamper-proof execution of computer code. So it's not just uh, the computer, you do need human input as well. Wikipedia has a slightly different definition. It says it's a computer protocol intended to facilitate, verify, or enforce a negotiation or performance of a contract. So it's helping the written or the standard contract rather than replacing it. And that's probably more where we are at the moment. The definition I like though, uh, being a non-technical person, is the practical definition you sometimes hear of a vending machine. So you put your money in and you get that packet of green M&Ms you selected, whether you like it or not. So rather than a contract as such, it's more accurate description, maybe a dynamic transaction. And again, not being a technical person, I'm not going to delve into the technical aspects of smart contracts, but instead focus on the benefits compared to the potential legal and contractual risks and liabilities and how to mitigate those. But looking first at benefits and uses, a lot of you would have heard about how smart contracts are being used in banking, retention of records, sale and purchase of assets, even hiring of property. However, looking at the construction industry specifically, the potential main uses of smart contracts in particular that have been discussed are payment retentions. So you could have a smart contract program to assess the status of a transaction to automatically take an action like releasing a payment. And this will avoid the delay in payments which are very prevalent in the industry and are a serious problem which you often hear discussed. Smart contracts could also be used to document production and other processes of goods to assist the traceability of goods and materials. And so you're providing sufficient information to reassure the recipients about the provenance of goods. And I know that's something that's been looked into and being trialed at the moment. But turning back to Wikipedia, it pointed out that the aim with smart contracts is to provide security that's superior to traditional contract law and reduce other transaction costs associated with contracting. And that really encapsulates some of the benefits that immediately come to mind for people when they think about smart contracts. 
But I've listed here some of what I think could be the potential benefits or are the benefits when you use smart contracts. First one being certainty. So computer code necessarily lacks the ambiguity of natural language, which used in traditional contracts. Everyone hates legalese and you do away with that. There's a reduction in costs because you get rid of paying intermediaries like lawyers, but there is the upfront development cost of templates and such. There's increased autonomy because again, you're not waiting around for intermediaries, agents, lawyers and such for the documentation. That it's much faster because you're not slowed down by human input in processing documents and signing documents you have therefore greater efficiency and a reduced risk of errors that come from manual completion by people. There's the increased security because of the hack proof nature of smart contracts. And obviously it has a very good level of confidentiality. The way smart contracts function mean there's a real potential for this significant reduction in costs as well as an increase in speed and security. And this makes it also harder to perpetrate fraud. The increases in reliability, integrity, and transparency of data and um, are likely to have a positive knock-on effect in increasing trust and collaboration between parties, which can only be a good thing and certainly is moving towards where we should be as an industry. As it's important to remember, at the beginning of a project, everyone's friends. If something happens, you're obviously going to just hold hands and talk about it and walk off into the sunset. However, when things go wrong, it looks more like this. And then you go back to your records, you try and work out what was agreed, you try and find the things that were issued so you can respond to a claim or indeed so you can assert one. and more like this. And this is where smart contracts could get around many of those problems and provide many of the benefits I've mentioned. However, um, one owner of a blockchain service went so far as to say that smart contracts will mean that there's never any confusion and never any need for litigation. And I think that's a bit too optimistic and I'll explain why. There are some issues and potential disputes caused by smart contracts which need to be looked at. As with all new technologies and processes, whether it's BIM or digital twins or even drones, you need to consider what are the new ways of working, what are the new risks, liabilities, scope of works that people are doing and how that should impact what you do and your documentation. So look at a few of the main ones. Uh, one it being there's a real lack of standards and regulations. We're, we're looking at a very new area of technology, a new way of working. We don't have a standard set of terminology. We don't have a standard set of regulations either in certain countries or indeed worldwide. And that leads to a lot of uncertainty and differing expectations. What your understanding is, of the position and what your rights are, what your responsibilities are, are going to be very, very different from the other parties. If you just say, let's use a smart contract for something, your understanding of what is going to achieve and the other parties, I can guarantee you will be at least a little bit different, if not completely. I'm sure there's going to be very technical legal arguments and very expensive court cases. And rather than being the person suffering in that regard, it's worth considering at the outset, how can you avoid that? Sit down and talk between each other. You can achieve a lot by simply talking, working out what you want to do with the smart contract, recording that in writing somewhere. Uh, as far back as 2016, the US Commodity Futures Trading Commissioner noted that smart contracts are moving rapidly, faster than underlying legal and regulatory frameworks. And rules are currently unwritten and likely years away, leaving the industry with little clarity. And unfortunately, we've not moved that far from that. We still don't have necessarily detailed regulations. We don't have a legal framework. We don't have case law as well. And until we have all those things, there will be necessarily an uncertainty as to what the position is. 
However, say, saying all that, you don't necessarily need completely new contract law to deal with smart contracts. The same contract law will apply as to what amounts to a legally binding contract, and that will differ from country to country, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. I've put up there four of the main criteria for a legally binding contract in the UK as an example, such as intention to create legal relations, certainty, consideration, often acceptance. You can use this criteria when you look at a smart contract to consider whether the parties wanted it to be legally binding and so arguably should amount to a legally binding contract. But having said that, if you did go to court, the uh, judge may have take a different view and that's something we do need to be aware of and take mitigation measures for. Uh, some of the other risks are and issues are the simple point of risk allocation. So there is a potential for errors, both human and computer. Even commute computers are not infallible. So you could, in terms of human error, you could have input error. You could have coding that doesn't actually reflect the intentions of the parties. Who's responsible for that? Who's responsible for the loss or delay that causes? In terms of computers, what happens if there's a hardware or software error? or there's coding bugs, and there's, it's not really anyone's fault who bears responsibility for the loss that occurs as a result. There's also issues of what are the binding obligations between the parties in executing and following the smart contracts in um, carrying it out to its intended purpose. And finally, insurance. Do the parties have insurance and the right insurance for if something goes wrong, for which they should be liable as regards a smart contract. It's worth talking to your broker and asking this question rather than assuming, because what you don't want to do is find out that you're not insured if something goes wrong. It's better to find out early on. The next one is scope and measures of performance. So what do you actually want a smart contract to do? Is that clear? And again, going back to the potential for misunderstanding, it's important to spell it out in such a very new area of work, new technology, so that you can ensure it does what the parties intend it to do. It's also worth bearing in mind that smart contracts may not be suitable for everything. In the status of how AI and machine learning is at the moment, it may not be so suitable for things which require subjective judgment of measures and certain KPIs. The machine can't tell if, a party has achieved a standard of reasonable skill and care. And in that regard, if you do want to use a smart contract, how much human involvement do you need to push the button and say, yes, that has happened? What's the practical processes that need to be put in place for the running of the smart contract throughout the project? And these are all very practical questions, but also things sometimes it's useful to write down. So if there is a question later on, everyone knows where they stand. Next one is about flexibility. Now, the unchanging nature of smart contracts and blockchain um, needs to be balanced by the way that the construction industry is a very change, by its nature, very changeable. So you often have late variations, you have um, late design changes. Can the smart contract cope with that and adapt to it? How will it be amended to cater for variations of this nature? Uh, in terms of termination of the project, termination of the contract generally. Is the smart contract catered for that? Can it be terminated in the same way as the rest of the contractual documentation so that it matches up? The next one is about legal standing and enforceability. So going back to the point, we don't have case law, we don't have regulations, it is an unknown point as to whether a court will say, yes, a smart contract is a contract in the traditional sense of the word and has the same legal standing. Or will they say, no, it's, it's a bit of coding which sits underneath the written contract. In uh, the same regard, it is not necessarily clear what law will apply to the smart contract. In a written contract, usually you'll have clauses which say um, this contract is governed by English law. 
and a jurisdiction will be England. A smart contract may not have something like that because of the nature of how it's created. And do you need to set that out somewhere else? Do you need to agree this in case there is a dispute about the smart contract? You want to know where the claim would sit. In regards to enforcement of the smart contract, different countries and different jurisdictions may have different laws and different understandings and principles as to how it should be enforced. And you will want to consider at the outset where, how it would be enforced where and where, because you may have complications in terms of enforcement across jurisdictions. And there's a very, it's a relatively complex area of law in terms of uh, enforcing contracts across jurisdictions, which I won't, won't bore you with. But it's something to talk to your uh, professional advisors about. One thing I'd note generally is that smart contracts, whilst um, they hack resistance, aren't hack proof. And relevant to smart contracts was uh, something I read that uh, in 2016, there was a $55 million ether drain hack of the DAO. Now this is, illustrates the complexities of the legalities of smart contracts because the hacker actually asserted in a statement that his actions were legal because the smart contract had permitted him to do what he did. He admitted it would have been illegal in a normal contract, but if it had been illegal, the smart contract wouldn't have allowed him to do so. He even threatened legal action if actions were taken to reclaim the sums. Such kinks clearly need to be ironed out either in documentation, in agreement, in discussion to avoid complications and misunderstandings. Next one is personal data and GDPR. Now, GDPR and other personal data regulations across the world may not be relevant to your smart contract, but given the very serious consequences of breaching these sorts of regulations, it is worth thinking about at the beginning. Talk to your relevant management internally who deal with GDPR, just to make sure there aren't any reporting or disclosure obligations you need to do. And if there are, just make sure you comply with them, or is there a way that you can avoid the um, ap application of GDPR just because of the sort of data you're dealing with? So I've talked a lot about the potential risks of smart contracts, but none of them are insurmountable. There are so many great benefits and potentials with smart contracts, but there clearly remains work needed to be done to progress it. But people are skeptical and think it's just going to be another buzzword. And these are two quotes I've heard over time from people I know. The first one was from a lawyer who said smart contracts are like the internet on steroids. And the other one from a person in the construction industry that said they're not smart or contracts. And there remains a lot of misunderstanding. But the revolution is coming, if not slowly. I would expect for now, smart contracts in construction will be used to complement traditional contracts, to supplement and be used as a tool to implement parts of the written contract rather than to replace it. When you're implementing and using smart contracts, at the moment, I would suggest working out and recording what are the scope and aims of the smart contract, making sure it's set up to do that who's responsible for the main processes, and most importantly, possibly, who bears liability for the main things that could go wrong. And on that, you may want to start at the beginning with a blank sheet of paper and just list all the realistic things that could go wrong and work out who should reasonably and realistically take responsibility for those. I know that the CBC has a white paper dealing with many aspects of smart contracts and will probably answer a lot of these points. I've put up there my uh, Twitter handle and my email address. Do feel free to contact me with comments and questions uh, about what I've talked about today uh, or anything else on construction technology. Always happy to have a chat about it. Thank you very much.